So, um, so Tim, Tim Blazar, is it Blazar? Is that how you it pronounce is, yeah. your name? Yeah, yeah absolutely. But it's yeah. spelt in a different way. It's like Blazard, and I bet you get people all the time saying B -b 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 it's a bit like O'Donoghue, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. So, Tim, your accent, you sound to me like you've grown up in Bradford. Is that right? Yeah, I was born in a place called East Bowling, um, and I live in Idle now, so I've lived in Bradford all my life, yeah. So you're, you're proper born and bred in Bradford, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah proud of it, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, Tim, we're doing a video games tour of Bradford, and I was wondering if you could think, if you were talking to somebody now who was sort of, in their teenage years and they they were interested in video games like maybe they want to go and study or they fancy a career or maybe it's just a hobby uh, are there certain things that you know of in bradford that you would recommend is there anything that you're involved in yourself that you would suggest well, one thing that's worth a look, Alan, is um, the, the Bradford College do lots of work on video game design. So <clears throat> we run we run a gaming festival for our primary school students, and one of the people that we had speaking there was one of their lecturers. So their lecturer came down and gave us lots of amazing advice and information about the gaming industry and all the different jobs you can do in the gaming industry. So um, you can go to Bradford College and you can find out about all the courses that they do in games design, which then will, you know, hopefully get you into that industry. So they do courses on things that would be useful to somebody who's going down that particular career profile, say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, they do lots of courses, but then there's, there's facilities there as well where when you're enrolled, you can actually drop in where there's tutors oh. there and then the tutors will be on hand while you just develop your game, work on your, on your projects there, and then you can just call on them for advice. So I imagine they must do taster days as well. They probably, either if there was a festival on, I guess they'd probably have some students and they must have students who've studied there as well, who, you know, a, a youngster nowadays could possibly find out if somebody's done a course and what they learnt on that yeah, and uh, I think I, I think that it's it is a definite career path because there are there are lots of gaming companies around here. If you if you look in in Bradford and then look a little bit wider at Leeds and Sheffield, you know you've got people like Rockstar Games that are you know world leaders that have got studios around here. So um, the, there's a huge pool of talent, and that's one way that people can get into it and learn from other people by looking at the college and the university as well. So you work at the Innovation Centre in Little Germany. You yeah. you host activities there, don't you? Like you mentioned the Games Festival, but isn't there something that you do at weekends as well? Yeah, like there's a, there's a code a code dojo takes place there. So the, the I mean they've still got stuff online. It's worth having a look at what the code dojo have got online at the minute as well. Um, but yeah, we have um, monthly sessions where. We get people that come down and do uh, different projects. And the great thing about that is you get people from industry that come in and show everybody how, how they code. So it's not, it's beyond school. And you can see quite a lot of the purpose behind it and the reason why you're making these things as well. So, yeah, so Coda Dojo is cool. I, I think I've seen like on Twitter or on Facebook, people sharing images from there. And there was somebody, I think somebody was building a Minecraft server. Somebody else was doing mods. So, and it's quite a range of ages, isn't it? There's adults as well as young people there. And they're all, but I, I guess, because it's on different times, different months, so I guess people would have to check the availability ahead and make sure that it was on. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can find it online. It's Bradford yeah. Coda Dojo. If you just search for Bradford Coda Dojo, yeah. then all the information will come straight up. So, Tim, when you were younger, did did did, did you play video games yourself? Like, yeah, you know? oh, absolutely. Um, I think we had a, an Atari console when we Whoa. when the came out. I mean, we were I was an arcade kid. We went to the seaside a lot, played loads of arcade games, and then when the arcade when the Atari consoles came out, we had those. Missile Command, you know, obviously things like Space Invaders, <laughs> but Missile Command and some some strange things like the ET game that you know people say it's the worst game of all time and it got buried. So things like that, I quite liked it. Um, and then Dragon Thirty Two Computer, um, and then got into spent way too much time playing things like Age of Empires and games like that, and then still play now. Um, so at the moment, I'm playing a game called Firewatch. I know it's not the newest; it's been out a few years, but 
the problem I have is I think as I get older, I lose the ability to retain all the mental map. So I think, oh, yeah, I need to go back to that campsite. How do I get there? And I just spend <laughs> ages walking round and round. But I played lots of games with my son as well. So my son is um, is 15. And we've played lots of games now. Um, we really enjoy playing a game called Child of Light. Love the independent games for the PlayStation. Um, yeah, so I love games, yeah. It's surprising just how many independent games companies there are in West Yorkshire, like yeah. especially in areas around Leeds. I think there are actually one or two in Bradford itself. I think there's one in Bingley. I'd yeah. have to check because people move, don't they, from, from time to time. And at the moment, there's a lot of people working from home. Is there, is there, am I right in thinking there's a game studio in Kirkstall or something? Or am I confusing that with something there's, else? There's a, place, there's a place in Kirkstall called Arcade Club. Um, so this guy started off, I think he's from Bury, he's from your side of the Pennines. <laughs> and uh, he, he, um, he started collecting old arcade games and and um, then he's. But these he's are like the big cabinets that you you put yeah. coins in to play. Yeah, like yeah, the real, the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And he, um, I think he got. He, I think his wife got fed up of him actually taking up loads of room. So he then got a warehouse and started filling that up. And then he decided, well, why don't I charge people to come and play these games? Um, and he's got. I think it's four floors now in Bury the one, and he's opened one at Kirkstall, um, not far from Kirkstall Abbey. So it's just over the border from Bradford and you, you pay something. I can't remember how much it is. It's not much, but then you can play games for like five or six hours and it's brilliant. So we go then relive my childhood. But for people that want to get into game design, it's just great to look at all those different examples because you've got loads of genres and, uh, you know, you can just pick up all those ideas from people. So you, yeah, arcade club's great. Oh, and they do food and drink as well. <laughs> oh, that that that's handy. Yeah. yeah. Do you know one of the things I think is like the jewel in the crown of Bradford is the fact that we we host the Yorkshire Games Festival here every year. Uh, have you ever been to that yourself, or or are you yeah. aware of what happens? Yeah, I've been to a couple of events. I think I think one of the things one of the things my kids really wanted to go. They wanted to go see some YouTubers a couple of years ago called Yogscast. That we're talking about how to how to become a YouTuber, and I remember all these exciting kids that just think that you sign up and then that's it, and you're a YouTuber for life. And these guys started up by saying, "Have a backup plan, um, have a plan B, and also be prepared to work so hard." And you could just see everybody in the audience go, "Oh!" Um, but yeah, it's it's great, and you, they, they get some real talent, don't they? They get some. Uh, they, they get some real big hitters from the industry to come and uh, and, and talk, you know, BAFTA winning game designers. Well, I was looking earlier, there's a, there's a whole playlist of interviews that they've recorded over the years. And not all of the presenters sound like they're from this part of the world. You know, they, they sound like there was people who come up from America, people coming up from London, Silicon Valley, you know. So, I mean, it is amazing that all of this happens in Bradford. I just mm. wonder, like, if you're a... You know, if you're a teenager, is there? A, would you think there's a lot of use in going to something like this? Do you think that that would be beneficial in some way? I think yeah, because it's it's got to be because if you've got some of the finest minds with some of the brightest ideas coming together on your doorstep, and you can ask them questions, then you know what's not to like. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing that that they've actually got something that any city anywhere in the world would be proud and honoured to host to take place here it, it, it's brilliant if you want to be in any kind of creative industry even if you're not wanting to be into game design but if you want to be any creative industry you can learn things from these people by going and seeing the creative process that they've gone through to make the award-winning content that they have yeah definitely and, and you just never know who you're going to meet at one of these festivals you know people trade contacts and you can you can see the different in fact, I remember when I was there last year, they were showing some early releases of things. You weren't allowed to take photographs of it because these these things were not yet made public, like consoles and games and things like that. Um, Tim, it's really lovely chatting to you. One of the things that I remember, every time we meet, you always come up with really good practical suggestions. So when you were talking about the Games Festival before, I do hear some people say, oh, you need Unity, or you need to be learning all about using this game engine. But when you're running the games festival, so they're mostly primary schools, would they be using Unity or is there other software that you tend to suggest no, we, or recommend? We, 
yeah we use we 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 mainly use scratch we've used other things like Kodu, and we've used a, an ipad app called tickle as well so people can design everything as well there's another one that's completely gone out of my head um that i'll have to tell you about later you'll have to put a caption on that <laughs> one, tell you what it is because it's gone out of my head that we've used as well but um we have people designing all sorts but but also what we do is we have people um we have a categories where people can tell us about game characters where they sketch things or where they, they, it's just pen and paper they, you know so it's like an abstraction for a game idea that people come up with because i think that that spark is great. I mean, if you go on somewhere like Steam and you look at the games that people make on Steam, it's just amazing. There's everything. Yeah. And and some sometimes, you know, the, the, the coding will come. If you've got the creativity and you've got that, then you, you can go. That's the reason to go and find out how to do all those other things. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. But we did have a lot of fun the last gaming festival that we had because we had um, huge games where we had, uh, kids as human controllers so we played um we played breakout do you remember breakout yeah with yeah you have so the bouncing had, ball and yeah. we had breakout and we had it wired up to a makey makey so we had on one wall we had um uh, a silver pad and on the other wall we had a silver pad so the kids had to run between them and touch them while they were holding an earth wire to Hope make them risk work and then we had, we had 60 <laughs> kids all work yeah i know yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had 60 kids all working together um on two maze games running at the same time so it was a race to actually get, but we had a teacher high-fiving in the middle to actually get around so it, it was just awesome so we, i can't two, remember what your question was but i just wanted yeah, to mention. no well there was two <laughs> things there that you you made me want to respond to one of them was you mentioned scratch and i think there's a real problem with scratch that people just under racist they don't and if you think about the games industry there are so many different disciplines so there's, there's people who physics is their thing all about how objects move and interact with each other and they're not busy designing characters and landscapes they're thinking all about how to make these games as realistic as possible and then of course you've got people who are fantastic artists they, they pick up a graphics tablet and the stuff that they it's so realistic the things that they can create and the lovely thing about scratch is you don't have to have a massive technical background but it's so wonderful for creating and demonstrating concepts of games like i can imagine you know you and your family have gone to this arcade game uh, thing in Kirkstall, and then you come back home and you're having a conversation. You think, Do you know, I wonder if I could take one of those games and you could model it in Scratch just to say to people, look, here's something I've been working on. Mm. Um, all right, I Tim. Think we, I, yeah. think, I think one of the things, though, just, just go to Scratch and then type in the name of a game. Just go to the website, type in the name of the game, see all the other versions that people have made. And then you can go in and you can have a look at the code if you want to, or you can just play the game. Well, that that's one of the reasons why Scratch is called what it is, because it it from hip hop where you take other people's work, you remix it into your own. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Down with Isn't the Tim. Tim, it's always so lovely to chat to you. So we're gonna go off and explore other areas of Bradford that young video gamers might be interested in. But thank you so much. And um, we'll take on board some of those tips that you've mentioned have a lovely day and uh speak to you again soon nice to speak to you alan <laughs>